Would you like to learn about business continuity planning and disaster recovery planning? If so, this video is for you. My name is Mike Gibbs. I'm the CEO of GoCloud Careers and an enterprise architect with over 25 years experience. And I find many new architects, new solutions architects, new cloud architects really struggle to learn business continuity planning, disaster recovery planning, and typically get confused between the two. So we are going to discuss what is business continuity planning and disaster recovery planning. We will discuss the differences between them. We will discuss maximum tolerable downtime and the concepts behind it. Then we will get into RTO and RPO and where that actually comes from, recovery time objectives and recovery point objectives. So. Before we compare and contrast these, let's talk about what is business continuity planning all about. Now, business continuity planning is typically a strategic process that an organization will use to make sure they can continue critical operations during downtime so, or challenges or major disasters. So how would we keep a hospital up and running? Inclusive of the people and everything else in that hospital goes into, say, business continuity planning. Now, the goal here is to minimize any kind of disruptions after a major disruption like an earthquake or a hurricane or something big to recover critical functions and quickly recover from these disruptions as fast as necessary for the business's need. So when we talk about business continuity planning, the scope is anything that would go, you would think in a cloud architecture, enterprise architecture, people, processes, technology and building, and it's going to involve a lot of it. We may need to operate in a different building. We may need to change the various business processes. We need certain technology to come up. So that's what's gonna be part of what's necessary. It's going to address all operational, all IT communications and everything that goes into business continuity planning. Now, how do we plan this? How do we determine what kind of things we need to do? Well, what we typically have to do is something called the business impact analysis. And what's gonna go into that is gonna help us first identify what are the key critical processes that must happen under all circumstances and also assess the impact of a disruption to one of those processes. So we have to assess that. Now, when we understand what needs to run versus what not doesn't need to run, then we can prioritize recovery efforts. So a hospital, for example, may have to take care of their patients first before they worry about other certain things going on. Now, what we have to determine as part of the business impact analysis is something called maximum tolerable downtime. Now, the maximum tolerable downtime is the maximum amount of time that the business can be down before suffering irreparable, unrecoverable losses. So when we start talking about recovery time objective later, the recovery time objective has to be less than the maximum tolerable downtime because if the business is going to be done forever, damaged after four hours is downtime, then we need to get that system up prior to four hours. I hope that makes sense. So realistically speaking, part of that business impact analysis is gonna be a risk assessment where we're gonna evaluate various threats and their likelihood, whether they be natural, technological, human or other words. And then we're going to be coming up with a recovery strategy based upon that maximum tolerable downtime. Again, total business operations is business continuity planning, or at least the essential business operations. Now let's talk about what disaster recovery planning is. This is a little different than business continuity planning, although it's a subset of business continuity planning. Disaster recovery planning is more of a formalized strategy and a set of procedures for restoring the tech or the IT systems and the data and the infrastructure after a disruptive event. Now that could be a natural disaster like a hurricane. It could potentially be a hacking event too. So with disaster recovery planning, it's about the tech and getting the tech up and operational. So what do we need to do from a disaster recovery planning perspective? First, we need to obviously understand the business and its business needs. We need to understand maximum tolerable downtime from the business impact analysis from business continuity planning. And now we need to catalog, catalog what we have. We need an inventory of all the critical systems. We need an inventory of all the critical applications, databases, network, compute, what have you. Because we can't figure out a plan to protect it unless we know exactly what we're protecting. And now we'd set our recovery 
time objective, which is has to be less than the maximum tolerable downtime or how much downtime we can tolerate. And then we come up with our recovery point objective, which is the maximum amount of data loss we can use. So if a business can tolerate two hours of data loss, their RPO has to be less than two hours. And we only know that after we understand the business and the business's needs and what can happen. Imagine a company the size of Amazon that had two hours of lost orders. That could be pretty significant. For other businesses, it could be small. So when we also set up our disaster recovery planning, we typically think of backup strategies, how frequently backup, the type of backup we use. Do we back up on cloud? Do we use a cloud disaster recovery environment? Do we have a, an additional disaster recovery environment that we can run on our own? We have to think about our data and its replication and the options that we actually choose. And uh, how we choose these options will determine how fast our systems actually come back. Now, when we think about disaster recovery planning, it's not just about the tech. We need to clearly define roles and responsibilities for the people on the disaster recovery team and what they will typically do. And typically speaking, as architects, we help organizations come up with run books and playbooks, which are more of a step-by-step -step instruction for how you would bring things back, how you would communicate events, or how you would escalate events in a real challenging environment. So I talked a little bit about RTO and RPO, but I want to get a little more de deep into the recovery time objective and the recovery point objective. So if we go back to RTO, now that's going to be the maximum amount of downtime that a business can actually handle. So business has to be up in two hours. The RTO is two hours. Now, Obviously, this is fairly strategic because we're looking at what the business can actually tolerate, how fast we need to get systems up. So this will determine the strategy. For example, we could run a warm standby in a cloud environment where we've got small versions of what we have in our data center in the cloud. And should something happen to our cloud within 45 minutes, that cloud environment can be up and running at full capacity which is great. But what if the business needs to be up and running in five minutes? Then we might need to have an identical replication of what we have, say, in our data center, in another data center, or a cloud provider. So we have to think about it. From a cost perspective, the shorter the recovery time objective, the more expensive it's going to get. So you're typically going to see very short recovery time objectives on, uh, say, big banks where there's lots of financial transactions or anything where there's a lot of money or life going through it. A hospital have to get that up and running fairly quickly. Now, lower recovery time objectives typically get much less expensive, reduce operational costs dramatically because you'll need less people to make these work. Now, let's get to that recovery point objective. And realistically speaking, it's the maximum amount of data loss that an organization can actually have. Could it be 10 minutes, 15 minutes, four hours? It's all based upon the business. And again, this is strategic. This is a strategic implementation uh, implication because if we can only tolerate two hours of lost data, we've got to back up at least every two hours or replicate our data at least every two hours. So obviously what we need to do, the amount of data we lose has a significant impact on our cloud architecture or enterprise architecture and how we actually do our backup strategies and the types of strategies behind that. So in this video, we really talked about the difference between business continuity planning, disaster recovery planning, RTO, RPO, and we discussed the concept of maximum tolerable downtime. Now, if you're looking to become a cloud architect, an enterprise architect, an AI architect, a security architect, not only do we have architecture programs that will teach you everything you need to get your first architect job, but we also have a completely free weekly webinar. We're on this webinar, we'll tell you what we do as architects, the skills you need as architects, how to get ahead as an architect, how to stand out as an architect and it's live and free on zoom so you can ask me any questions you desire about your career want me to assess you for free on these careers ask you some questions to see if you're ready to apply for a job check your your linkedin profile or resume for you i'm happy to do it free of charge on these calls you can sign up for one of these free architecture webinars in the description of this video and while you're in the description of this video we've got guides on how to be an architect or our guides on how to win the interview uh sign up for some they're completely free and they're all in the description of this video if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell to be notified of new videos to assist you in your cloud architect, solutions architect, enterprise architect, security architect, or any other type of architecture career. This is Mike Gibbs signing off for now, and I hope to see you soon.